All right, Dassel, what what did we what did we see here? Well, we got a lead on a on a sofa out on a curbside. Usually they don't transpire into anything, but let's go take a look, Patrick. It's local. It's right around the corner from the shop. So we, we understand that somebody said they saw claw feet and they saw it as an antique. Um, but I'll be able to tell once we uh, go by it and see what's going on here. We probably should make sure that somebody's not just leaving it out there to be refinished later or picked up by somebody else. Hopefully we don't pick something up that belongs. It's usually a good idea to ring a bell and say, hey, is this curbside? Or, or they might even have it listed on the local uh, paper. Sometimes people will list it saying that there's a curbside ready to be picked up. So we'll see. Yeah, there it is, look. Oh, good. Wow. We're on the block again because there's somebody no, walking along. Let's just take a, ooh. Yeah, so let's take another look at it, take another drive-by. Drive-by sofa viewing here. Let's pull over here, take a look at it. I'm just going to go out and take a look at it, Patrick. I'm on the other side of the street. It looks pretty good. It's an, an indication of what's really getting my attention. The person who saw it looked up the claw fee, but what's really getting my attention, Patrick, is the thinness of the back. That's an indication that it's a quality piece. Let's, let's uh, ring the bell. So we talked to the homeowner to make sure that it, it wasn't just out here being picked up by another upholsterer or something or a refinisher. Uh, to give us permission, it was his mom's. It's about 90 years old. It's the original fabric, so it's going to be beautifully done up. It's a really got great line, so we're kind of excited. So let's grab it. Here we are back at the shop with this piece, and we found a very interesting discovery. But before I get to that, I just want to talk a little bit about my feelings about it. When I first looked at it, I think we mentioned when we were picking it up, is I, I noticed the scale was really perfect on this, which, which is indication usually when scale means one of two things, that it's an original. When I mean scale, is uh, nothing's overstuffed. It's, it's appropriate to the size, to the length and the height. It, it's really, you need an eye to see that. I, I could see that from a block away, especially the, the back. So that means one or two things, that it was that it's like ancient, it's a real antique, or that it's a very good reproduction of an antique. And in this case, this is a very good reproduction. Some people would call this, by the way, Chippendale. It's got the ball, uh, claw and ball leg. It's got the camelback, and some people would call it Chippendale, although Chippendale would have a little bit of a slighter camelback, I think, and probably um, an upholstered arm with the piping here, which these could be turned into. But so, so I was curious, the first thing, so another thing I wanted to show you, it was on the sidewalk just as you see it, as you saw. We didn't stage it or anything, it was like that. And I think it, it told me that somebody cared about it. So sure enough, we, we knocked on the door, we were talking to the guy. Um, it was his mother's, he thinks it's about, what, 90 years old. Um, um, he had it presented just like this and he was watching out the window. I think he was hoping that somebody would take it that would appreciate it instead of having it go to the dump. And I certainly appreciate it, as well as Patrick and, and Michaela. But when you see this, these are a little unusual, these box cushions like this, these throw pillows in a box, a little unusual. We make them with, with uh, one welt now. But I found that very interesting. So I was curious, so I, I undid the, I, I lifted the cushion, simply lifted the cushion, and I found something really cool. It's a sticker, and it's a sticker from H. Journey and Sons in there, right? It's in really good shape. It was probably done in the 60s. So 90 years old, maybe not quite 90. I would say uh, 62, what's this, 62, 7, 8, 9, 1. So maybe 50, 50, 55 years, something like that old. Maybe 60. So it's in that category of furniture, though, that um, if, you, if you don't have an original, um, the second best thing is something custom made to, to, to fit perfectly what an original would be or to look like an original would be. So I'm really excited about this piece. So we have Michaela here. She's going to go through the books to find four fabrics style-wise that we're going to uh, put up for a vote on to what you guys would like to see on that sofa. So my failing, just to let you know, would be um, it was uh, two uh, men had given this their mother's sofa up because to me it looked very um, dated, right? let me say that. So we're going to have Michaela look through the books to find four styles of fabrics that, that might be good contenders um, in order, but we'll have you guys vote on it, okay?
Taylor's picked some really cool, interesting styles of fabric, and I just wanted to uh, give my input, but we're looking for some votes on this. So the geometric, um, I'm telling you, a geometric shape is a good idea as long as it's geometric, as long as it's, it can be run sideways. We don't have to put a seam in there because this is a tight back. So this is one of the things we have to look out for or warn people about that if you go to the velvet, which is also a good, that's a traditional fabric, I would say the most traditional fabric that Michaela has picked out, and I know that a lot of people will still like tradition, keep traditional fabrics with traditional furniture, but I'm also finding another group that likes to go a little wild sometimes, or a little different. The geometric would be certainly different on this. The velvet would be traditional, but keep in mind, if you do a velvet or something with the nap, you're gonna have traditional seams down each, each right, right about here on the back. Now, people today, I find, don't like that, but that was a very traditional way of upholstering with the velvet. So not only do you get the fabric that's traditional, you get a traditional treatment, and you would probably stick to these uh, tacks um, if you're going to do the velvet, for instance. If you're going to do a geometric or one of the other fabrics, which we'll get to, you might want to do a little style changes, and we could do that too, like with the piping. Um, so it, it depends on what our votes are going to come in at, how we're going to finish this too, by the way. Now this is an interesting cotton cloth. Not, you're not going to get um, a longer uh, life out of that as you would the, the velvet or the geometric here, which are upholstery weight fabrics. But I think that's kind of cool, free flowing, flowing up like that. Very uh, maybe if you had a second home, you'd put that in. Um, so that's that's interesting. Now the last one I think is my favorite. I think that that's cool. A, a animal print. I like, if I were going to do it for myself, I think I might do it like with that. A very non-traditional fabric, and it's not a real animal print, as you know, it's faux. Um, so that would be kind of cool. I think it would go great with the claw leg, you know, keeping in the animal. I think I would probably uh, maybe put silver tacks down here to finish it off. be kind of cool. Uh, maybe even paint the legs. haven't really thought that out a little bit. Maybe not put the, the, the walnut color on there, but... excited at some point this is going to be done in a fabric that you guys voted on and I'm excited about having something when I'm done that's going to be more contemporary looking hopefully with your votes but also it's going to have the eight-way tie it's going to be done so well the frame hardwood frame I mean this has got a lot going for it so the next time you're going to see this we'll be up at the Broadway upholstery school store so we hope that uh, you take a look at that and maybe do a little bidding on it so thanks